Judging from comments on my channel, a lot of my viewers still really love the Xbox 360, especially all the racing games it has to offer. So I thought for this video, I wanted to take a look at the lesser known racing games for the 360. Now I'm not branding them as hidden gems, just titles that didn't get talked much about then and now. Some will be good, some will be average, but it will be fun to take a look at them all again. So here's 5 forgotten racing games for the 360. Yeah I know, everybody knows the Need for Speed series, but The Run is a title that I don't see talked about that much. The game has a simple but fun premise. You're a street racer who's massively in debt with the mob, and you're offered a place in a huge race across America from San Francisco to New York to earn the money you owe. You pick a car and jump into the race. There's always a race position you have to aim for during each section, otherwise you'll be knocked out of the competition. What I really like about this game is the opportunity for lots of variety in the track design and driving feedback. As you drive through Nevada you have to contend with sandstorms, when you reach Colorado you'll have to battle against the snow and icy mountain roads. All along there are scripted events that happen such as these avalanches you have to avoid. Unfortunately there are some dreaded quick time events added into the mix, but they aren't too bad. You earn boost in a similar way to the burnout games such as driving into oncoming traffic, near misses and taking down police and other drivers. You can also change a car during the race by pulling into gas stations. While the game had mixed reviews, it remains one of my favourite Need for Speed games. With Dirt 5 being announced for next gen systems, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at this Dirt spin-off game that kind of passed under the radar. Dirt Showdown takes a step back from the formula that made the series so good and attempts a more destruction derby kind of game. This game has the same style as the Dirt series, but it's lacking the substance. You have fewer cars to choose from and the tracks can be often a bit dull and repetitive. The Hoonigan events return from Dirt 3, but I always find these events a bit tedious. With each car having its own health bar, the game pushes you to drive more aggressively to take down your opponents, but the gameplay doesn't make this a fun process. I can totally see why this title has been forgotten, it certainly didn't meet the quality of the rest of the Dirt series, but you can tell that the developers tried hard to make something a little different and I have to commend them for that. Import Tuna Challenge is a game I always saw on the shelves in used game shops but never thought to buy. It just looks so generic in a sea of racing games. Strangely enough the game is shooting up in price now. To give some background on this title, this is the last game in the Japanese racing game series called Tokyo Extreme Racer in North America and Shotoku Battle in Japan. This game is certainly more targeted to car enthusiasts who like to alter the small details of their vehicles. You start the game by buying a car and you have plenty of options to alter stuff like the engine and tyres and there's options for customization of your paint and decals. You earn money for these mods by challenging other drivers, you simply flash your lights at them to initiate a race. Each of you has a spirit point bar that depletes if you lag too far behind, drain your opponent's bar to win the race. While I've not played any of the previous games in this series, I didn't really get on with this title, the driving kind of just felt a bit strange. When you bump into a wall you just simply slow down like the barriers are made of glue or something. There is some nice Japanese quirkiness to the game, like the names of the drivers that you challenge, but ultimately I'll be giving this one a miss in the future. Fatal Inertia is always a game I saw on shelves in secondhand game shops for dirt cheap prices, but I never felt compelled to buy it, even at a really low price. I always thought it looked like a knockoff version of Wipeout. Upon playing it, I can see there's lots of similarities with Sony's futuristic racing counterpart, but there's some elements this game has that help differentiate itself too. Firstly, the good choice of weapons you can pick up during racing. 
these weapons usually have a primary and secondary function, with the primary being offensive and the secondary being a speed boost or firing your weapon backwards. The most unique of these collectible weapons is the tether, which you can use in many different ways. You can tether rival drivers to the scenery or other drivers to slow them down, or you can use it to slingshot and propel yourself forward. Certain weapons act like a magnet and stick to the crafts, so you'll have to perform a barrel roll to shake them off. Do a barrel roll! There's a decent variety to the tracks as well. There's six different environment styles with over 50 tracks across them. The main problem I have with some of the tracks is they feel too short and cramped. You're not going to want to boost on a track so small as you'll have a good chance of smashing into the wall. I think the biggest downfall of the game is its track's design. The game is quite rough around the edges, but I still had fun with it. Finally, let's talk about a racing game published by Disney. Pure is a quad bike racer with an emphasis on performing tricks. The game has a simple but fun trick system where once you've performed enough easy tricks you'll unlock the medium ones and then onto the hard ones, finalising in an opportunity to perform a special trick. Performing these tricks increases your boost meter but boosting can reduce your chance of performing the harder tricks. It's a simple system that works really well. I think most people that played this game would have bought the bundle that included Lego Batman. I assume it was bought for kids for the Batman game and Pure was sadly ignored. There's three main modes within the game. Race is a typical race mode, Sprint puts you on shorter tracks with more of an emphasis on driving, and Freestyle mode is where you have to perform tricks to earn points to fill up your gas meter. Overall this is a quality game, the tracks are really well designed and brimming with nice details. The gameplay is really fun and doesn't get too repetitive. You can pick this title up for very cheap these days so I'd highly recommend buying a copy. Thank you for watching this video on 5 Forgotten 360 racing games. As always I want to know some of the racing games for the 360 that you think didn't get spoken about that much over the years and I will see you in the next video.